I am here. It is the last talk of the day. And like I was telling you guys and everyone else in the room, there's more people here than I was expecting. I was expecting four um, <laughs> because I was in, I think it was Tampa, uh, work camp Tampa, and I was on a panel. And there were more people on the panel than in the room. So that didn't happen. Uh, we wound up just talking a lot. So um, <sighs> multi-tendency versus multi-site. We're going to couple, cover me, multi-site, multi-tenancy, and then hopefully multiple questions. Uh, because I'm going to be summarizing a lot of things and not really getting into the weeds on some of the technologies. Because uh, I think um, it will lose you guys because it loses me too. Um, because uh, I have guys that have built the multi-tenancy for me. I'm more like, I have ideas. Uh, they came up with uh, implementation. I am father of four. I've got a couple here. Yay, kids. Um, I own yeah, my little ones. I don't know. They'd be pretty distracting. Um, people on my team know because they hear them in the background. We're on team calls and stuff. They're very loud. Um, but uh, I own a company called Sideways 8, co-own it uh, with a friend of mine. Uh, been around for eight years, and I've got two of my employees here. The other ones, eh, we'll, we'll see what's happening uh, next week. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, lead, I lead tours to Israel. Um, in, uh, in a couple weeks, I'll be over there, assuming Russia's, you know, still nice um, and all that stuff. I'm a WordPress user, WordPress developer, uh, organizer of this uh, WordCamp. Um, there's probably some... I'm, Lots of WordPress stuff. Um, vegetarian, which is weird. Um, stay hungry all the time. And I'm Atlanta native, uh, even though some people would debate uh, if I'm an uh, Atlanta native or a Decatur native. Nonetheless, I was born and raised within 10 miles from here. So, um, Are you in the right room? Um, I hope you are. Um, if you manage similar sites, uh, if you manage franchises uh, or single sites are killing you, and I've had these are like word for word here uh, for multiple reasons uh, because these slides are going to go on WordPress.tv uh, too. Um, but if you're thinking about doing verticals, uh, so like let's say you do a lot of dentist websites or doctor websites, it's you know the same over and over and over again. You probably should be using one of these uh, concepts, uh, or maybe not. Um, like I said, I'm generalizing a lot because I can't get into the, the weeds um, as much as I could, you know, one by one if I had five hours. Um, but I'm generalizing, and so these are false statements, kind of, uh, but it'll give you the general idea. Um, with both of these, multi-site and multi-tenancy, it's about being, locking, being locked down, okay? Um, so in, in theory, um, no one would be able to install plugins except for on, you know, if you're the administrator of the multi-tenancy, um, you know, you would be able to upload stuff. But you're trying to lock it down so when you set up a subsite, uh, they won't be able to mess stuff up. Uh, no one will be able to install themes. No one should have SFTP access. Um, and then, uh, I guess that's it. Boom. All right, I'm going to cover these five things. Maybe it'll be quick. Maybe not. We'll see. All right. What is uh, multi-site? Um, we have a great uh, definition um, on the create a network on, on the codex here. But basically, it's one WordPress installation used for either subdomains, so site1.aaronryman.com, site2, or whatever, or, you know, uh, Atlanta.companyname.com, and then there's one in Decatur. Dot, you know, whatever for for franchises, um, stuff like that. Uh, you can also put it in a subdirectory, uh, so your your site can. It doesn't necessarily have to be the subdomain. It doesn't have to be a something dot domain. It can be slash uh, city name or something like that. How is it hosted? It is hosted the same way as any normal WordPress installation. 
Um, so you don't have to be a rocket science to you know, configure it and set it up. You have to add a couple lines into the uh, WP config file. Um, and I forget how to do it, actually. I, then you log in, you go over here, and you enable a couple things, and boom, it should take like 10 minutes uh, or less. Um, if you're wanting to do something like atlanta.companyname.com, you'll have to do a wildcard DNS uh, so the DNS will, will work. And I, how many, am I losing you guys? Who, who's good so far? Everyone's good? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, then you're in the right room. Um, how does the database work? Um, simplifying a little here, um, WordPress by default um, has 12 tables, uh, things like WP options, WP users, WP users, metadata, stuff like that. Um, and the way multi-site works is when you add a new uh, subsite or multi-site, uh, I guess I'll use the word subsite, um, it will uh, create 10 of those tables. Um, you don't need the user names or the user table and the data for that um, because your user information will be tied in um, for, for each site. And so you could lock it down where um, one user has access to three of the five subsites. Um, causes a problem later, though, if you want to move that into its own domain, its own WordPress install somewhere. Maybe, maybe I'll go into that. I don't know. Um, is there a use case for it? For sure. Um, we did a website for a child care, um, what do you call it, daycare. Um, and they had their main site, um, let's call it kids.com. Uh, and because I was subcontracted, I can't mention the name of the company. Um, but uh, then they had like Johns Creek dot uh, kids.com, Atlanta dot, you know, whatever the cities were, they had 60 uh, locations uh, plus. And what we did, we had, I think, 11 plugins written to do certain aspects of it. Um, it's all in one database, okay, uh, versus multi tenancy will have separate databases. This uses the same database. And so one of the plugins we had, it'll push menus into all the subsites, okay? So you have the corporate site, we want every, uh, they wanted every child care to have, you know, about us. Uh, you know, what are the rules, you know, all the common stuff. And we didn't, they didn't want the subsite people to remove those, you know, for possibly legal purposes or whatever. Um, and so we had um, certain pages, you would check them and you'd hit submit or I can't even think in WordPress. Uh, publish. Uh, I do a lot of content. Can you tell? Um, that'll be um, that was set up to push onto all 60 sites. So comes in pretty handy, but none of that stuff is built in uh, for multi-site. So if you're looking for pushing that type of stuff in, so for example, we wanted they wanted um, the ability to have a slider. Ooh, um, a slider um, on the home page, and they wanted it because it was, I don't know, a Halloween um, you know, event that was happening at every um, location. We wrote a plugin to push that slide into all 60 sites. Okay? Making sense? Um, that stuff isn't, isn't built in, but if you have things that are really, really uh, related, um, to each other, that comes in pretty handy. All right, why not use it? Um, users might need more control. Um, so you might want it where um, a agent, not an agency, a company needs to be able to install plugins, or they might need to do uh, more administrative things. Multi-site's gonna lock you down. Multi-tenancy will do the same thing, though. Um, this is the big one for me. Um, I know it's possible, um, but if, let's say, um, you're doing a multi-site that is not related, let's say you do a lot of banned websites, okay? Um, and this person uh, is like, okay, I like your service, it's been great, I'm tired of uh, hosting it, I wanna use 
AaronRocks.com um, for my band, getting that information out is going to be hard because your the user data is not tied in, and so you have ten tables that are hard to get them to talk to each other. So exporting is kind of hard. Obviously, you can export as an XML feed. You can make it work, um, but it's not, you know, you don't hit the download button, zip it up, and you're good to go. Um, some plugins don't work on multi-site. I think that's probably kind of rare, uh, but it's, it is common with 47,000. Oh, has that number changed? Is it up to 48 now? OK, um, you know, 47,000 plugins out there, some of them aren't going to work with multi-site. OK, I have at the end of this, I have a little uh, bit.ly link uh, for these slides. But uh, if you Google server pilot, why you should not use WordPress multi-site, it gives you a pretty good rundown of why not to use it. OK, um, I think they hit all the things that I thought were were important. So uh, I'll give you guys just a second if you guys are writing that down. But I will have a bit.ly at the end. And go. All right. Multi-tenancy. What is multi-tenancy? It is. This is Wikipedia. So this is truth. Um, the term uh, software multi-tenancy uh, refers to a software or architecture, I can't read, um, is um, in which a single instance of software runs on a server and serves multiple tenants, OK? Um, in my case, we have, like, we have a repository of all the plugins and all the themes and everything, and all the sites pull from that. And I'll have some really bad looking diagrams in a minute to kind of explain it. So it begins. So what we have. Um, like I said, this is simplifying, but we have a website. Uh, sorry, we have a server, okay, running Linux, Nginx, Maria, Maria, Maria DB, and PHP, um, and we have this site. Uh, we spin up a site in multi-tenancy, and it will have the WP content slash uploads um, and the WP config file, and then the database. Really, that is unique to each site, those two things. All of the plugins and themes and whatever else we have in here, uh, WordPress itself, so the admin and the includes, um, those are exactly the same for every site. So we have, obviously, site number two. This is unique. The stuff that they upload is unique. The uh, config file is unique because it's connecting to a different database than this guy would. Um, and then, obviously, the database is unique. Following me? Even camera guy, he's following. So we're good. He's, he's, I hear this all the time. So all right. Uh, so um, we have all of these sites. So site one, site two, site three, site three. What is in common are these, these things. WordPress itself, plugins itself, and themes itself. And when we update one of the plugins or we update one of the themes or something to that effect, um, run a little script that Marty would probably do because I don't really know how to do it. Um, pull down all these Git repositories. And then it's pushed, or actually it's pulled uh, down, and each server will get all of those things. So maintaining it really is kind of easy. Security-wise, the files don't need to be, the permissions can be a little more uh, locked down because a user is not going to go and hit the update button. Um, they shouldn't have access to it. We kind of disabled uh, some of those things uh, within our, our platform. OK. If you guys had to create 48 websites um, with all the plugins, all of the themes, plugins, everything, the admin, how long would it take you guys to spin up 48? Right? It would take a little while. Um, so what we can do, um, we can spin them up in probably 10, 5 to 10 minutes. Okay? What, what we're able to do, we have an interface. I'll kind of get into that slightly. But we also have a little script where you can have a spreadsheet. Uh, to pull in 
what the domain should be, what the user is going to be, et cetera, et cetera. It generates the site, the database, gets all of the plugins and themes it needs to from the Git repository. Is there a use case? Well, yes, there is. So, um, so we're a, uh, you guys probably saw our Sideways 8's uh, booth over there. And one of the things that uh, you build, uh, what is it? We've built uh, 250 websites for uh, nonprofits. And um, we use that uh, with 48 and 48. So the first year we were at, um, we did 48 and 48. We were trying to figure out how are we going to do this. We wanted it where we could have anybody shows up with, uh, you know, like let's say they're a Rails developer or, uh, I don't know, Django developer, WordPress. They could come in and do whatever they want to do, use whatever tools that they want to use, um, and they could build a site and then hand it over to a nonprofit. Okay, but we're going to wind up getting this obscure Django uh, installation that the nonprofit's not going to be able to find a developer to be able to maintain it or update it or anything. Uh, or it might also not be, might not be written well. So a very wise person named Cliff Seal said, why don't you guys do a platform like multi-tenancy? Um, we used his platform, uh, and it worked great uh, the first year. And, but it's kind of hard to support a ton of uh, WordPress uh, installs for nonprofits. Nonprofits are needy, uh, and I don't mean that, I mean, it makes sense that they need a lot of stuff. Supporting it's kind of difficult. So we uh, decided to build our own platform so we can tweak it the way it needs to be tweaked for us uh, to, to work on it. Anyway, um, so the way 48 and 48 works is, I wasn't going to go into this, but I'm going to anyway because I got time. Sit here for a little while. No, um, we um, Gina, who is in here, um, she's on staff at Forty Eight and Forty Eight. Um, they and I. This is my <laughs> interpretation of what you guys do. So hopefully, I'm doing it right. We'll see. Um, they will. Um, so so this year uh, we're we or Forty Eight and Forty Eight. I'm not technically there. I just help out with the technical side. Um, in two weeks, it's going to be in Raleigh in Blooming. Oh, Boston, and then some, some, in Bloomington, and then in the fall, London, Atlanta, New York, and possibly, probably in that order. Um, so 48 times six um, is a lot of websites. Um, but what Gina and her team will do, or Adam and his team, and Carol and all those people, um, they will uh, talk to the nonprofits in the city. They'll sign up, and then we've built this GUI to uh, spin up a site. Uh, so it's really easy within a couple seconds or a couple minutes. If you have to log in, you can create a WordPress installation with all the stuff that you need or they need to build it. We have, I don't know, under 100 uh, plugins on there. But it gives, you know, we've got Gravity Forms. We've got WooCommerce, um, things that uh, nonprofits will need to accept uh, payments because donations are really cool. Um, that's the use case, and like I said, we've done over 250 uh, sites with that, and by the end of the year, we'll have doubled that. So it's a lot of sites. We also, just so you know, we don't lock people into this platform. Um, so after the event, we have a plugin, Marty wrote, that um, goes and it can zip up the active plugins, uh, the active theme and the database, all the images and everything, they have a zip file, and they can go wherever they want with it. Um, so uh, it's beneficial for them, because they could go somewhere cheaper for hosting, like GoDaddy, Bluehost, A2, who else were the uh, yeah. public, Cygr you know, all the sponsors that were here. You know, so they can go to a regular uh, hosting uh, platform. Um, and makes them happy. They've got a website, et cetera, et cetera. Um, oh. So Justin and Garrett, thanks guys. Um, they they built the um, most most of the platform uh, and did the uh, Laravel uh, app, so Gina can go in and spin up a site without having to you know go into uh, command line and do stuff that most people don't know how to do. What? Which is good because I don't have 
you don't know how to do it yet. Yeah, exactly. I tell you to go into terminal and you'll say, what? Terminal's such a bad term. So um, how is it hosted? Um, it's however way you want it to work. Um, you know, if you're happy with a bare metal server and you want to have a bunch of servers uh, at your house, don't do that, but at a, a data center, you can do that. If you want it to build it on AWS, DigitalOcean, feel free. How does the database work? I think I have another diagram coming up in just a minute. Um, but they're individual databases. So 12 tables like a normal WordPress installation. So it makes it easy. When you zip it up, someone can go somewhere else. There's a lot of um, places out there that are doing multi-site. Um, you know, let's use the doctor uh, thing as an, as an example. Um, they build doctor websites, and so they're on multi-site. When it's time for them to go, it's kind of difficult. Um, there's not, I don't know, is there a plugin to convert something from multi-site? Cliff Seal and Micah are nodding their head yes. So, OK, does it work? Have you tried it? Yeah, does it work? OK, so it's possible. Um, it just might not be the easiest. So here's kind of how the multi-tenancy works. We have the series of tubes, also known as the internet. Um, and some people laughed. That was good. Um, then we have DigitalOcean. And what DigitalOcean does, it gives us little, uh, little servers, virtual servers. Based. That might be a bad term. Uh, anyway, servers. Um, and we have this portal running Larval. So Gina can log in. She can create a site. Um, once she puts that information in, important stuff like the nonprofit's uh, email address of the person that's going to be there. Because what it's going to do is it's going to send an email, WordPress email, saying, here's your username and password. Um, so once she creates that and also puts Cloudflare credentials in there, it goes to the provisioning server. The provisioning server does stuff that's smart, that's awesome. It talks to the database server, so it creates a site for that nonprofit. And then, um, depending on whichever server, because we have a, not a slew, but we have a decent amount of servers on there, um, it'll, one of the sites will wind up on one of these, uh, one of the servers. Does that make sense? Kind of? So, yeah, we have, I think we have, Marty, how many do we have? Eight? Ten? Okay, so ten. So one server for the portal, one for the provisioner, one, it's simplifying a little, for the, the database, and then the actual, the PHP, uh, the actual processing of the website, you know, uh, will hold, I don't know, 20 to 50 websites on that server. But it all comes, all of the plugins, all the themes and everything come from this central repository or multiple repositories. How am I doing? It's going to be shorter than I thought. Sweet. It's the end of the weekend, so end of the event. We all just want to go home. So, oh, need to fix my slide. So why not use it? Because um, it's hard. <laughs> um, WordPress is kind of easy to install. Uh, you know, you can do it in five or so minutes uh, if you get really good at it. Um, to build a multi-tenancy, uh, it requires a lot of knowledge. Um, like I said, my, I can't do it. Um, you know, hire people that can do it. Um, but I understand the concept, right? Um, so you need to know Linux. You need to know Git, uh, Laravel, DigitalOcean API. Uh, Rabbit, see where I'm going? That's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that probably is not talked about here at uh, WordCamp. Um, I would probably Git. There's normally a Git talk. I don't think there was this year, though. Um, Ansible for like uh, playbooks uh, to run the scripts. Um, and these two are kind of cool. So the Let's Encrypt and the Cloudflare. Um, so when, when a uh, nonprofit says, I need a website, Gina goes in, creates it. We, uh, we get them to put Cloudflare credentials in there. Um, and so that way, when we hit the Go Live button, it talk to the API, the Let's Encrypt API, give them an SSL certificate. Then it will also talk to Cloudflare and say, hey, this domain, uh, switch it from 
my site dot forty eight and forty eight sites dot org to the real domain, um, and so it makes it easy at an event when you only have forty eight hours at the end of the the event should be able to push some buttons to make things go live. Um, we'll know in a couple of weeks how well that, <laughs> how that worked. We we did it all manually the first um, I don't know five or six uh, things. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of uh, tweaking, uh, trying to make 48 sites go live um, in one evening um, once everybody is really tired, too. So, so like I said, it's a lot of work. Um, but for certain use cases, it's great. I don't know if there's many uh, use cases for multi-tenancy. Um, I know uh, Evermore has a multi-tenancy platform. And it works great for them for their use case, but it's a lot of it's a lot of work to set it all up. Uh, multi sites, um, I'm sorry, yeah, multi site. Uh, it's a lot more simple, um, but the use cases are pretty different. So, right here is the Bitly link, uh, so you can get these slides. And 27 minutes. That's not bad. So, um, anybody have any questions?